Do you want more great content from me? Check out the description box down below. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to a sales update. So, oh, I better stand that way a little bit so I can put the pictures in there. So, uh, in today's video, I have got a sales update for you, obviously, like I just said, um, for, well, I was going to say for the month of Feb, but I'm not really doing monthly sales updates anymore, mainly the kind of more weekly now. So, um, yeah, just for the last few days, really, as I've mentioned, uh, it's now, I think it's like the no, no, I was going to say 12th of February, it's like the 23rd or 24th or something now. This video will probably go out in a week or so because I've been scheduling videos like crazy. Um, so yeah, at this current time, at this current moment, it's been very, very slow for me. So mainly the sales you're going to see are just bread and butter. However, you will probably get some value out of them because there's some items in here that are pretty cool. Uh, there's one Lego minifigure in particular that I didn't think had much value, but it actually does. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So keep an eye out for that figure when uh, when you see it in the in the sales update. But yeah, so a few bit odds and ends really. I've got them all on my phone, so excuse me if I'm looking down at my phone a little bit. Um, but yeah, we'll start off with the first item. So. This first one was a window wizard, it's the purple one. I actually said in the video for this when I uh, showed it that it was the blue one, but actually this is the purple one, and this is the one that's more desirable because it's for double glazing specifically. I got 25 quid within a day or two for that. Very, very happy from a 2 99 investment. Not a lot to be said, really. I mean, as I say, it was a great, um, you know, it was a great sale, but pretty standard, you know, obviously these are worth looking out for, so yeah. Um, the price hasn't come down much, so uh, obviously it's not too saturated, that market. Um, so next was this match, Matchbox Lesney uh, Woolsley, Woolersley, Woolersley, I think, uh, 1,500 die-cast model. Um, yeah, quite cool, this one. 18.99 plus postage, in really, really good condition. Obviously, it wasn't boxed, it wasn't mint, but it was in really nice condition, because a lot of these cars... Uh, really really badly play worn when, when you see them so it was really lovely to see this one in all of its glory really and the paint is really nice I love the colour of the paint on, on this I don't know quite what you call it I mean it's not quite a lime green or anything like that but I don't know it's just like a quite a nice light green really um, but yeah really nice 18.99 plus postage it came in a job lot from ages ago that I'll be in profit on so quite happy with that it was a massive job lot of I got like a, about three or four lots in an auction once that was mainly just die cast stuff it was like about three or four lots as I say but in those lots there was maybe two boxes a lot so there was quite a lot of die cast I had to go through but yeah definitely plenty of profit so I was really really happy I actually got one that was worth quite a bit of money as well I had one that was worth worth 80 quid from one of those lots and I had another three that were about 40 quid a piece as well so you know for a little die cast car that is quite a lot of money so yeah quite happy with that uh, here is the Lego minifigure, which is this uh, Lego Jedi Coleman Traybor um, plus lightsaber Star Wars minifigure. 15 quid for this. For what it is, you know, a little minifigure, that's quite uh, cool, really, to, to get 15 quid. Um, obviously, there's minifigures that are a lot more than that as well, but I'm quite happy with that. I didn't know this one specifically had a lot of value, um, but obviously, 15 quid, that, there's some value there, so I was quite happy with that. And I love selling the minifigures for, you know, a bit more money as well, because if for a single minifigure, it's just a large letter job, very, very easy to pack, so yeah. Really happy with that. That came in my most recent Lego haul for 250 quid. I've gone through that. Very, uh, very happy with what I got. Plenty of profit in that. I am keeping a few of the sealed sets, or I'm keeping two of the sealed sets as an investment as well, um, because they're going to do quite well in the long term, I believe. So, yeah, quite happy with that. Next was something I actually don't know how much I paid for, and I don't know where I got it from. I'm assuming this was a charity shop job at some point, maybe maximum I would have paid was about a fiver. I can't see me paying more than that for something like this, um, but I honestly do not know where I got it. Um, so yeah, this was a vintage Sony Walkman, uh, WMX uh, EX190 uh, with the Sony headphones, 28 quid plus postage, so I was fairly happy with that, although as I say, I kind of don't know where I got that from, I don't know whether it was... Uh, charity shop, don't know whether it was boot sale, it, I think it was a fair while ago, but I don't think it was mega long ago, but yeah, some things you just forget, honestly, you just forget, you just, 
whack them in your record, you know, you whack your prices in your record, and then after that, you just forget, you know, and then they sell and they surprise you and think, oh, right, that's gone. So it is, you know, when you're selling quite a lot of stuff, sometimes that just happens. Um, but yeah, vintage silver Polaroid uh, 600 instant camera, uh, 26 quid on auction plus my four pound postage. Happy with this, I paid 10 quid and obviously I listed it pretty much straight away when I got it and I flipped it into 30 quid on auction in a week. So I was quite, you know, I was quite happy with that, it was pretty cool. Um, I was quite risky, you know what I'm like when I do eBay auctions, I'm very risky. I'll buy things uh, for like, you know, a few quid and then I will put them on like at the same price that I bought them for and just hope they go up. It's terrible, I should not be on YouTube giving this advice but D don't do what I do unless you're comfortable with the fact that... Thing is, I've been doing this quite a while now. I know the things on auction that will go higher. You see what I mean? So I know, I knew, even though I put this on at quite low, um, I knew this would go higher. Now, I didn't put this on at 99p or 4.99. I think I put it on at about 13, 14.99. But still, that wouldn't have le left me pretty much any profit or much profit. So it was still quite risky. But I kind of knew this would go up. I mean, there are some things I do put on at 99p, 2.99, 4.99, and I might have you know two quid invested in them or something. So a three quid invested in them. So it, you know you, you've got to be careful when you're doing this. But if you know what you're kind of doing, you know the items that are going to go, you know, take take off a little bit. It's not actually that risky at the end of the day. But yeah, uh, still I was quite happy with that. Uh, next was this vintage mid-century uh, pool pottery. Uh, made by Jacqueline Way, it had the uh, artist mark for Jacqueline Way, which it, which I found out was actually like a little X type thing. But you know when people draw the X as like two C's that kind of interlink, it was like that mark. And I was really interested to find out, you know, the marks and the the history of this piece because it was a nice one. I mean, it's not really any there's not much value in it at all, really. I did have it listed for twenty pound nineteen ninety nine plus the six pound uh, postage. As you can see there, I have put my postage up in line with what Hermes are now charging. And I might put it up a little bit further if I can, just to cover my eBay postage fees, you know, because they charge fees on the uh, actual postage. So, yeah, I might put it up a little bit further. But, yeah, I still I accepted an offer after a few days for £16.99. I think they originally sent me one at, like, £14.99 and I counted it. But yeah, I was still quite happy with that. It cost me, I think it was £15 plus commission or £20 plus commission in a job lot of other pool pottery. I got a, a same style as this. I got a like another little sort of bowl. I got a, um, a quite a large plate, actually. I got an Arthur Wood kind of uh, pottery sort of in the shape of like a fruit basket. And I got a couple of other pool pottery pieces. So, I mean... This just about or, or just under covers my cost of the auction lot and the rest is kind of uh, pretty much profit. I mean, when the next piece goes, I'll I'll still have a little bit of cost in it and then after that it'll be it'll be profit. So yeah, I was quite happy with that. Um, next were these that you will have seen on one of my recent videos, which are the Horrible History magazines and card collection. Um, I put these on for 25 I, I think I paid 4 99 for these. Uh, and I put 649 postage on again, and uh, so like 31 quid in total. Went pretty quickly, probably within a week, so I was quite happy with that. Maybe I could have shot for 29.99, but from a five pound investment, I wasn't complaining. You know, five quid in 25 quid plus postage, that's a, a fair markup. So yeah, I was quite happy with that, and I was happy just to see them go fairly quickly. Uh, next was something from my most recent auction haul, um, which was this Paragon. Uh, fine bone china um, teapot and saucer. Uh, I think it's the green briar pattern. Um, and yeah, 15 quid plus post. It didn't really know what to pitch this at because I don't think I actually saw a teapot specifically listed. I think maybe I might have been able to achieve a little bit more going off maybe how quick this sold. It probably, probably within a week, or, well, within maybe two or three days actually. But um, it wasn't one of those sales that went after a minute or an hour. It, you know, it, it was definitely over 24 hours. But um, yeah, maybe I could have got a little bit more, 19.99. But still, I was quite happy with that. Came in a box job lot with loads of different ceramics and stuff. Paid about £15 plus commission for. So I was quite happy with that, really, at the end of the day. Next was this um, 
and you can see my face lit up then. Next was this Dun & Co uh, dongle light green, uh, Dongal, I think that's how you pronounce it, light green Troby, sort of in like a fishing style. It's got a little um, sort of feather in it as well. I paid 49p for this um, in Old Tringham actually. And I had it up for 15 quid plus postage. I originally thought by mistake in the video, I thought that Dun & Co were better than they actually were, but unfortunately I was getting mistaken with Lock & Co. Lock & Co hats are better and are worth more than Dun & Co hats on the whole really. I mean, might be one or two Dun & Co that might succeed Lock & Co hats. Really depends on whether the vintage, you know, what sort of retail price they had and what desirability they have. But um, generally, it's Lock & Co that are better than Dun & Co. So I originally thought I would be getting more than this, more like 20 quid. But unfortunately, because it was Dun & Co and not Lock & Co, um, I made a mistake. I did put it on for 15 quid plus postage. I accepted an offer of £12.50 plus my £3 postage. So I got about 15 quid all in. Paid 49p, so I can't, I couldn't have gone wrong anyway, even if it was Dun & Co or Lock & Co, whichever, whatever mix-up occurred, I knew I was still going to get great money from 49p. So, yeah, uh, Dun & Co, Lock & Co, you know, things like that, they go well, Christie's, um, you know, even, actually, Darren uh, from Smart Reselling opened my eyes to buying M&S caps, because he sold in this uh, ads flip challenge he's doing, uh, an M&S cap, I believe it was used as well, for 10 quid, so I couldn't believe that, because M&S caps don't retail for mega more than that, really, so, yeah, I was quite surprised that he, that he got that for that cap, so I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for some more, maybe, um, better quality M&S ones, maybe not the standard ones, but maybe the better quality ones, so, yeah, so there's plenty of hats, and hats are fairly steady sellers, I wouldn't say they're mega quick, but certainly they are not as slow as I first thought. I thought hats would maybe be one every two months, one every month. They're not that slow. Hats, if you put them on for a good price and you've got the name, they can go within a week, honestly. So it's just about pricing with everything. It's just about pricing, really. It doesn't matter how slow an item is. If you get the pricing right, you can, you can get a fairly quick sale. Okay, with some things, they are just slow. But even if you get the pricing right, you can kind of force them. You can like kind of force slow items to be a little bit quicker than they are if you get the pricing right. But some things saying that are just slow, like I've always mentioned. Um, so this one was a vintage stoneware Ruffle Dead pie dish. Um, it came in the 23 or 22 or whatever boxes worth of stuff from the auction house I got for like 300 and odd quid. Um, yeah, 11.69 plus postage went in my 10% off sale. So yeah, quite happy with that. Nothing major special, but I thought I'll list it, see if I get some money for it. Quite a big dish, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, and I think, are we, are we done? Yeah, we're done. That's the 10 sales. So uh, that'll do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. If you did enjoy it, please do leave a like down below. If you've got any, any questions or queries about this video, then please do leave them down below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the sales or whether you think... I've got some decent prices there for things, or whether you think I've undersold a few things, what are your thoughts on it? And uh, yeah, I will leave it there guys, so I will see you in the next video, so see you very soon guys.